has been hot as well. They won 10 of 12, but the Wolverines need to win tonight if they want to stay in the regular season race. Glad to have you with us from Mackey Arena. Reese Davis and Robbie Hummel here, the former Purdue All-American. Who knows how crazy this place can get. And Robbie, they're hoping that they're going to see the best Purdue team of all time. Certainly the way they're playing right now has been sensational. And they get off the great start night in and night out. Well, they really have. And they've been led by Carson and Vince Edwards. Those two combining in their last three first halves for 78 points. Their opponents just 69. So they have been an on an absolute tear to start basketball games. Carson Edwards a dynamic scorer, Vincent Edwards a more versatile player. Two, the two of them combined to make up this lethal Purdue attack and Michigan has got to be worried about those two all night. This Purdue team, Robbie, is coming off a performance against Iowa in which they hit 20 three-pointers. Nobody shoots the three better among major conference teams than do the Boilermakers. But Michigan played them to a one-point game the last time. Couple of big fellas, Isaac Haas and Mo Wagner to jump it up. Maybe not the greatest toss in the world, but Carson Edwards controls it, and the Boilers in their gray will get things started. Here's an early touch for Isaac Haas. Haas in his last two games had just one field goal, and they get it to him early. And pay attention, that post entry feed comes from the top of the key. No help side there. Isaac Haas able to seal his man and get to his right hand. Haas is a giant Huge. human being. 7'2", I mean, 290. And here's the matchup you'll see. Haas inside on Wagner, and Wagner able to step outside and knock down the three those, as part of his yeah, game. Those are the looks that Matt Painter does not want to see. Mo Wagner has really torched this Purdue defense in the past, and if you're going to give him open shots, he's going to knock him down. No double team help. Haas misses the short one, and Wagner pulls it away. One thing Mo said to me today was, look, Haas is huge. He's going to score. He might even dunk on me some. But they want to make sure to take away clean looks from three. Well, it's going to be interesting, and you mentioned it here, Reese. Do they let Isaac Haas play one-on-one -on -one as we see Rockmont get to his right hand and lay it in? Do you let Isaac Haas play one-on-one -on -one and just shut down the perimeter? Ahmed Ali Abdul Rahman with his first bucket in Michigan. Comes out to a three-point lead. Now, in the meeting in Ann Arbor, which turned out to be a one-point Purdue win, it was the Boilers who built a double-digit lead in the first half. Michigan had a lead late. Couldn't close the deal. Vince Edwards misses from in close. Here comes Xavier Simpson, much improved sophomore guard for John Beeline's team. Wagner spinning, and they're going to call an offensive foul for the hook. P.J. Thompson pushes him out, and yeah, he, he certainly does hook him. We're going to see switches all night with this Purdue defense. Maybe we'll look at that again. I'm, I'm not so sure I'm not in agreement with John Beeline, who's the winningest coach in Michigan history. I didn't necessarily love that offensive foul call when guarded by the smaller guy. We look again at another whistle, and... We call an illegal screen. But was that was that an even up? Yeah, my <laughs> man. Let's, let's take a look right here. Bo Wagner on the post pushed out. PJ Thompson. Oh, no, it's a hook. Yeah, I guess so. The yeah. the you got Mo was guilty of being way taller than PJ. <laughs> <laughs> he swung the arm around and got the hook. I so if you had less than two minutes in before I criticize the officiating, you're a winner. John Teske has checked in for Michigan. Gonna make sure that Wagner, who is an emotional player, settles down, doesn't get himself in early foul trouble. Michigan could ill afford that with a shot clock headed toward five. After a rock mod, soft touch, and Teske was the one to knock it out of bounds, and it'll be Purdue ball. Here is Matt Painter, coaching at his alma mater, his 13th season at Purdue. He's won 284 games, won the Big Ten regular season championship last year, took his team to the Sweet 16 where they lost to Kansas. Both of these teams actually in the Sweet 16 and same regional last year, and both fell. Michigan going down to Oregon. Haas working on Teske, and Haas has his second bucket. In their last meeting, John Teske, I thought, able to push Isaac Haas off the block, but right there, Haas catches it deep and gets to his right jump hook where he is so comfortable. Only six field goal attempts in the last two games for Haas, a product of the way teams have defended Purdue, but he had a season-high 14 shots the first time these two teams played. Haas, right in 
noted as a shot blocker, but he swats it away, and it looks as if Michigan the last to touch it. That's even more productive block shot by the big fella. And certainly Haas, not the best shot blocker in the Big Ten, but here comes over and meets Charles Matthews on his way to the rim. Haas averaging a little over 13 points. Doesn't rebound at a high rate necessarily for a man his size, but he can score in time. That test me on his hip. Nobody coming to double. Haas, count. Well, it looks like John Beeline is content to let Isaac Haas play one-on-one, -on -one, and so far, he's been able to get the better of both John Teske and Mo Wagner. Beeline stretched out, out of the coaching box, on a knee, signaling plays to his team. And Purdue defense among the top five in the country in defensive efficiency. What a great cut by Matthews, and he just gets squashed by Haas, who sort of landed on him, and the transfer from Kentucky is slow to get to his feet. Goodness, you have that man fall on you. You said it, Reese. Great cut by Charles Matthews. Blows by his defender. A nice head fake as well. Gets the 7-2 Haas in the air, and... Fortunately, Charles Matthews pays the price. He is 7-2. More important to Charles at that particular moment was nearly 300 pounds. He's Charles Matthews in his last five games. Remember, he didn't play a lot of minutes at Kentucky, set out a year after the transfer. There's some aspects of his game that you see where he's been strong and others where he hasn't been bad. Yeah, and he's been able to get to the rim and, and really get to his pull-up. I and mean, he's got a, a pretty good-looking pull-up. He has good elevation on it, sometimes a little off-balance. So when he gets really off-balance, that's when his shot goes a little south. But he's been able to generate some opportunities, just hasn't been able to finish at the rim. We've seen his shot blocked already once tonight. And his pull-up jumper has, has really just kind of let him down. 9% over his last five games. Matthews makes both free throws, which is a victory for him. He's only shooting 54%. And we were at practice today. D-line was on Charles and Xavier Simpson, for that matter. Eight extra free throws at the end. Michigan's defense pushing Purdue's attack out. Extra aggressive on the dribble handoffs, trying to make the Boilermakers a little uncomfortable. And Xavier with a sweet move to get the bucket. Going off a little footwork there. He can score in so many ways. Such a versatile player. A guy that's unselfish but can also get his. And the nation's second best three-point shooting team. Best among all major conference teams. Has all four field goals in the paint. Matt Harms, 32, is in for Haas now. Abdur Rahman gets a clean look from the corner. But that's a winning play from John Teske. It just shows up as a rebound in the box score, but just a huge boost for this Michigan attack, getting a second chance there. And Rahman calmly knocks down the corner three. Cody Mathias. Purdue's first three-point attempt on the way. And P.J. Thompson is shooting over for 50% from behind the arc this year. Missed five. High, lob, terrific look for Matthews and Teske there on the finish. But you love the action. It's the roll and rise, and a riser coming up, a roller going to the rim. Purdue's defense gets lost. And Michigan able to capitalize for the easy two. Good chance from Isaiah Livers, but Purdue maintains possession. Matthias with a tough shot along the baseline. Really impressed so far with Michigan's defense. They have made it tough on Purdue. Nothing easy out here right now, and really a forced look there from Dakota Mathias. Michigan's defensive numbers, Robbie, are, are really strong. You made the comment while we were sitting around watching Warlords. You think this might be as good a defensive team as Beeline has had it? Well, he's been known so much for his offense, and he's such a, a great offensive coach, but this Michigan team, they make it tough on him. Matthews, nice and soft, but he can't get the roll. Edwards, and Carson leaves it on the front of the rim, and Purdue's missed their first two from behind the arc. And so far, Michigan has accomplished its goal. They've kept Purdue from getting off to that quick start from behind the arc, and they've been able to answer, and they have a four-point lead on the road, Rob.
We saw Michigan go to a little pick and roll action. And so far, so good in West Lafayette for the Wolverines. Tonight for Haas, he's been able to go to work and operate on the low block. We'll be interested to see how this plays out. Does Michigan change their strategy as tonight goes on? But it's simple math, though. I mean, it takes longer for twos to beat you than it takes for threes. And in that game that you showed, Michigan turns it over. That's not an ordinary occurrence for them. But I mean, look, you're not going to hit 23s every night. But over the last eight games, Purdue has hit 103 out of 208 from three-point land as Haas returns and Harms will take a seat. I mean, their last four games, they've made 12 threes in every one of them. And they've been unconscious. So if I'm going to, if I'm coaching against Purdue, I'm going to, I'm, I'm letting Isaac Haas go one-on-one. -on -one and I'm not getting beat by the three-point shot because they've proven they can do that. Ryan Klein into the game. He, too, a dangerous shooter from beyond the arc. There's a battle on the block right now between John Teske and Isaac Haas. Some big bodies going at down there. Edwards has his shot blocked. Delivers on the rejection. And the freshman from Kalamazoo has it rim out. Haas with another rebound. Wagner's been on the bench for a while. Vince Edwards, there's a three. And the maturation of Carson Edwards continues. It's a great look off the pick and roll. He knows he's got Vince Edwards rising behind him. Finds his man, and Vince Edwards knocks it down. Carson Edwards from Texas. Atascocita, Vincent Edwards from Middletown. They're not related, though Vincent said he did have family in the Houston area. And Xavier Simpson, who has improved his shooting, did not do so on that particular attempt. Haas ball. Yeah. <laughs> Isaac Haas rolling off the, the pick and roll. He does such a good job of hunting his shots to the rim. And there, Isaiah Livers a little late coming over. Haas able to finish through the contact, and he's looking for an and one. In the four games coming into this one, as Carson Edwards delivered that pass, he had 19 assists and one turnover. This is a guy who was about one to one a year ago for every assist he had a turnover. His natural inclination is to score, but I think one of the reasons this Purdue team has really taken off is because of the decision making. As Haas, who hit the game winning free throw in Ann Arbor, tries to complete the three-point play, and he does. You can look at Purdue's offense. Right now, they're averaging 1.28 points per possession when he's on the floor. It's the highest in the Ken Palm era. I mean, that's an incredible stat. They have been so efficient with him on the court, especially as of late. And a significant difference in drop-off when he's not on the floor. Nojel Easter, number 20, has checked into the Purdue lineup as well. Arms is back. And the pull-up shot is knocked down by Jordan Poole, who has checked in for Beeline's team. I love Jordan Poole's game. He's a guy that's going to make some mistakes. We saw him make a couple in their win against Rutgers, but he can score the basketball. And right there, gets to his pull-up. Does a great job of finding a spot, knocking down the J. Klein, pull-up, fire from the corner. And Grady Eifert into the game and into the box score with the rebound. And it gets away. Michigan trying to push it. Purdue is back. Here's Poole again. 4-3. That's what Jordan Poole does. He's come in, especially if you look at the Maryland game. He was able to come in in the second half and change that game for the better for this Wolverine offense. And thus far, it's been instant offense off the bench for Jordan Poole. And for Michigan, Michigan scored seven points off its bench for the three-point lead. No Joe Eastern off the Purdue bench. Fouled on his way to the basket by Livers. Back and forth we've gone. The Wolverines with a go to the monitor and figure things out. There's Rob Riley and Terry Oglesby over there saying, how much time do you think? They're going to look at the shot clock and figure that out. You know, initially, on the initial officials list tonight, we saw Gene Steratore's name, who's going to be officiating in the Super Bowl, also does college basketball games here. You see, we're watching this last possession.
and we're at 11.06. I'm not sure that was the one that they're, that they're watching. I'm not sure that that's the issue right now. I heard Bob was using the other day say that all replays should have a clock on them in, in all sports. It should be mandated for one minute. If they can't figure it out in a minute, let's just play. You gotta roll with it. I'd be okay with that. I mean, we start worrying about the clock at this point. I, I think it's kind of a moot point. It may give Beeline some uh, bad flashbacks when you see him going over there. Well, there you go. The, clock, the reason they were looking at that last possession now, or the possession that we showed you a moment ago, is that the clock stopped for a while, Terry Oglesby tells me, at 13.32, and they don't have a look to fix it. So we're going to roll with the 11.06. No gel Eastern. The freshman from Evanston who's been getting more playing time of late misses the first of two free throws. And he missed them both. And Haas comes out with the offensive rebound. So clock rolling. Everybody living with just under 11 minutes to play. I was mentioning, okay. Yeah, I was mentioning <laughs> that Beeline might get some flashbacks. There was a crucial play late in the first meeting as Edwards knocked down the three. That originally an out-of-bounds play, which led to the game-winning free throws, had been ruled in favor of Michigan, Michigan's ball. They went and looked at it, it was a lengthy review, and they ended up giving the ball to Purdue, and the Boilermakers ended up winning it. Wagner goes behind his back, and soon he was separated from the basketball. Look at that seal. Haas, that's deep position, that's easy. And that's too easy for John Beeline. Bo Wagner, turnover on one end, doesn't force Isaac Haas out far enough on the other, and this Matthew Arena crowd is in this game. Shot clock at five. Cool in trouble. Air ball. <laughs> Matthias. <laughs> the crowd was ready to go off, and now Michigan has an opportunity. Duncan Robinson, a terrific three-point shooter, and we have another lead change, the ninth of the first half. And John Beeline talked about it at shoot-around. Duncan Robinson does not need permission to shoot the basketball. He needs to come off aggressive and right there, running the floor in transition, gets a great look, and sticks it. Eastern lays it in. With a really good cut there, and an even better catch. I mean, no gel Eastern right there. That pass thrown in his feet. Good hands to corral it. Really good. Offensive teams tripped on his way to the basket. Crowd doesn't like it. It's going to stay with Michigan. Jerron Simmons. And now they're going to talk it over and maybe not to appease the crowd, but inside the ball will go to the Boilermakers. Simmons, a graduate transfer from Ohio U. And he'll go back over after that turnover. And to me, that's a foul. Yeah, he's tripped. Looks like he got tripped. Having a conversation with Beeline, perhaps pleading his case to just that. Matthias, three. Well, Duncan Robinson gets a little lost there and gets disconnected from Dakota Matthias. And Matthias is so comfortable coming off pin downs. Right there, sets his feet. You give him that kind of time, he's going to knock it down. 10 3 1, Purdue has its biggest lead. All the way to the basket to quiet the crowd, at least momentarily. Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman. He just has such a poise to him. And he's able right there to get to his right hand. A very good straight line driver. And an answer for this Michigan team. He, you mentioned how poised he is. Some of his teammates say that they've never seen him angry. <laughs> he, he has a very calm demeanor. Talking with him today, individually, which in the offensive game is going a little better, but he's been locking down the opponent's best player. But nobody is locking down the pride of Hopes Bluff, Alabama, as Isaac Haas now has 13. Well, he is taking his time. He's so on balance right now when he does those two things. 
He can really score the ball in the post. Wagner oh. had tripped and he's called for a travel instead. Beeline displeased. That's a couple. Of, that's not. That's not right. That's a couple of plays where Michigan was driven the ball, looked as if they were tripped and didn't get the call. But Haas is getting a lot to go his way. He's got 13. SEC, the home end of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. In some of the cases, Baylor's going to be at Florida. Big 12 at home where college game day will be. It'll be Kentucky and West Virginia. Tennessee and Iowa State, Texas A&M, Kansas among those. The game in prime time. Calipari and Huggins, longtime friends, on my way to Morgantown. After this game, looking forward to getting there for that. By the way, if you happen to be, well, there's Isaac Haas who has double Michigan's output in the paint. The officials came over during the break. They finally found where the clock error was, the sixth second error. So six fewer seconds than when you went to break. And a little miscommunication in and out between the two Edwards and a turnover for the Boilers. So there's six fewer seconds. We're all set on the clock. We're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> As a cause who has 13 of Purdue's 26 has been going back and forth with Matt Harms. Harms a gifted shot blocker, one of the higher block percentages in the country. Moves his feet really well for a big two, but Bo Wagner has to take advantage of him when he's matched up with the freshman. And right now you see him posting up. You've got to get the ball to him. And they can't. Wagner had Thompson on him. Instead, Wagner gets a three-pointer on the way. He hits his other points of the night. He hit first three of the night. That one won't go down. They need to, they, you'd like to see them get it inside. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love small you, you want to see them get it inside, but right there, Michigan drives the paint, gets a nice jump stop, gets, the, gets a paint touch, and gets it back to Bo Wagner, who's obviously a very good three-point shooter. It's good offense, but when he has a smaller guy on him, I know he's not the greatest scorer down there, but if you can get him the ball, you can force some rotations. You can force some people to have to send a double, put some pressure on this Purdue defense. And then get it to your shooters. Last foul was called on the freshman Jordan Poole, Michigan. So we just four team fouls in the first half. Only a couple for Purdue. That's a terrific look. Edwards to Edwards. Carson to Vince. And we talked about the duo in the open. And they just seem to be so locked in on the same page. Carson Edwards able to get his game on and find his four man. 9 2 run has given the Boilers their biggest lead of the night. Rockman, almost the dreaded neck ball. I thought that thing was going to lodge between the rim and the backboard. Edwards to work on Robinson. And he trapped. Good defensive play by Duncan Robinson, a much more productive possession. In the previous time, two Edwards guys hooking up. Carson Edwards utilizing the crossover dribble right here. And just shakes Duncan Robinson. It's a good job of finding the open man for the easy deuce. If I'm Michigan and Purdue's going to switch these ball screens, I don't want to see their guards make a habit of going one-on-one. -on -one. They, they need to, to do some other things. And, and you can see a hit back maybe where they give it up and get it back going downhill. Also could see them, you know, we talked about throwing into the post. But there's an example of what Robbie's talking about, about switching the ball screens. Despite the height differential, Carson Edwards came off and guarded Wagner. The turnover, and Carson Edwards buries it on the other end. Timeout, Michigan. Defense lead to offense. Carson Edwards getting it done. A couple of the seniors doing work for Purdue in this first half against Michigan. Isaac Haas did it early. And now in the latter stages of the first half, it is Benson Edwards and the lone sophomore in the starting lineup, Carson Edwards. 
13 points. Michigan only has 22. Problematic for the Wolverines, two guys that they rely on for some offense. Mo Wagner and Charles Matthews each with just one field goal, though Wagner now has a couple for the offensive rebound and the putback. Really a good job there by Mo Wagner of staying with the play. Xavier Simpson with some nice dual penetration. Thought he could have maybe dumped it off to Wagner initially. Wagner does a good job of keeping it alive on the glass. Arms tried to get it inside of the four. Xavier Simpson the other way. Oh, the top right in the face of the shot blocker who couldn't get it. And a terrific play by the Michigan point guard. Arms is going to be called for his first foul. And Haas will come in to replace him. Xavier Simpson just outruns everybody. Nice little steal here. And take a look at this. Look at that speed. And then the tough finish. Matt Harms unable to block the shot. Well, maybe a little... <laughs> hey, he got his arm, but what are you going to do? Hey, man, he's giving up a foot and three yes, inches. Is. Right? This is the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. the Seven three kid from the Netherlands, Matt Harms. This show's Purdue is going to have yet another big guy. Simpson, who has struggled from the free throw line, as we mentioned earlier, completes the three point play. And while Michigan appeared to be reeling a little bit, they've answered and closed. The gap back to four. You gotta love the response. And here we see for the first time tonight a double team. But a good job by Bo Wagner of holding his ground, and Isaac Haas just runs him over. And he picked up his second foul in doing so, Robbie. So Harms is right back after having been replaced by Haas in just seconds. Oh, baby. I don't know about that one. Haas didn't really hit him that hard. Definitely had the position, but not much contact. Right, there's, fair there's enough there's to say. Yeah, I think that's fair. Think Wagner went Vlade on the people? <laughs> that would be a fair statement as well. <laughs> Gamesmanship works. Wagner right by Harms. Oh, Wagner can't get it to go. But you love the tech. I mean, Matt Harms is not an experienced Big Ten player. And you've got a guy that's been through the war with Bo Wagner getting to the rim. Carson Edwards working on Abdur Rahman, who's called for the foul. It's his first. Mohammed didn't like the call. Purdue up by four on the Wolverines. Side of this game, charge, go the other way. Reese, Robbie, back to you guys. You think Green ever came in here and complained about the whistle? <laughs> Maybe a time I've, I've or seen two. Him do it before. <laughs> Big 12 SEC Challenge Saturday on ESPN. Fifth annual to Oklahoma and Alabama at 2:15 with Trey Young. Then A&M and Kansas from Allen Fieldhouse, and then Kentucky and West Virginia in Morgantown. College game day will be in Morgantown Saturday morning, and then the game at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Charles Matthews just picked up the foul for Michigan. Michigan now with 16 fouls, next foul, and Boilermakers will be shooting. Carson Edwards. And really good defense by Xavier Simpson. That's just better offense. I mean, he was in Carson Edwards' grill right there. Really made it difficult for him, and Edwards just made a tough pull and jumper. Abdur Rahman missed it, but Teske finished it. You have Purdue shot blockers converging on the basketball, and John Teske finds himself all alone. He's given good minutes for this Michigan team with Wagner on the bench. Teske, 7-1. The touring guys filled out to 255 pounds. Still has a little more room to grow as well. Edwards feeling it and rattled out on it. Love the way Michigan defending that pin down play, switching guard to guard. Making it a little difficult there for Carson Edwards to come off and feel comfortable. How about the maturity, Robbie, of this Michigan team? Purdue had it rolling in here, and now with an opportunity to get it back to a one possession game. Matthews penetrating, and right on cue, they turn it over again. Matthias didn't catch it cleanly, and after it was knocked away by Simpson, Dakota, Stuck out his arm. He's probably fortunate he wasn't called for a foul. Xavier Simpson making some plays on the defensive end right now. Active hands. Really been a factor thus far. 
tonight for Michigan. Michigan already with seven turnovers. They typically only turn it over just under ten times per game. Edwards. Again. We're playing with so much confidence right now. If you're not up on the ball screen, he feels extremely comfortable and he can go up there, elevate, and knock it down. Carson Edwards averaging 17 a game, four rebounds, three assists, shooting high percentages. And Purdue stretches it back out to seven. Matthews chases it down. Excellent Purdue defense. Matthews finds Teske, and Teske's foul on his way to the basket. That will be on DJ Thompson. He's going to get his first. Carson Edwards utilizing some ball screen action here. And John Teske, you see him, he's up, but not up enough. Carson Edwards able to rise and fire over the seven-footer. Teske a 56% free throw shooter, but that one is clean. He did a really good job on that last possession of rolling hard to the rim. Produced weak side defense, not where it needs to be, not to the middle of the paint. Teske able to roll. Really uncontested. Purdue has to foul to avoid giving up a layup. Back to a five-point game. Teske has been productive in his time on the floor in relief of Mo Wagner. So now we're headed down close to the last 90 seconds of the first half. I would think this is an important time for Michigan. Can't let Purdue go to the locker room with extra momentum that can come from threes. Teske got a hand on it and kept it alive for Abdul Rachman. Matthews has been quiet offensively tonight. Xavier Simpson knocks down the three, and Michigan is back to within two. The Michigan's offense really operating right now at a high level, and if you're gonna, if Purdue's gonna down. The side ball screen to try to keep it on the right side of the floor. Tess is going to have some opportunities to short roll and look to the weak side. Arms forcing on Teske. And Teske is called for the foul. It's his first. It's one and one time now for the Boilers. Purdue's defense, now they are sucked in after the last possession. Xavier Simpson with a nice little ball fake, and if Dakota Mathias isn't gonna rotate to you, you go up there and you stick that three. Good offense right now for this Wolverine attack, and, and if you're John Beeline, you're down two. I mean, you feel great about going into the half. Not three, chance to be four, but another possession here for, for your team. Gotta like where you stand. And particularly, been impressed from watching Michigan several times last year, having called their games. Tons makes them both. Xavier Simpson, who's a trip scorer in high school, he had a 65 point game in high school as Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio. He really struggled to score a year ago, and early in this season, it struggled with a little loss of confidence in his offensive game, and he's really come on, and when teams leave him open, he does what he did in that last trip. Xavier has the ball again now, guarded by P.J. Thompson. He's had some really complete games. Right? Look at that State. move. And over the oh. big fella. Wow. Xavier Simpson. How about Simpson? Going off the handle there. Splits the ball screen. Hangs in the air and a tough right-hand finish. Last shot time for Purdue. Carson Edwards. That's down the three. Abdul Rahman can't get it going on the strength of Edwards' three and six of 11 three-point shooting in the first half. They'll take a five-point lead to the break. 50% from the floor, even better than that in the first half. The three-point shot came along late in the half. And it's a 41-36 lead. They started inside and finished outside. And the Boilers won 15 in a row with their undefeated in Big Ten play. Number three in the country, riding a 15-game winning streak with a 41-36 lead over the Wolverines. Isaac Haas did all of his damage in the first 12 minutes of the first half. Reese Davis, Robbie Hummel with you from Mackey Arena. Purdue has been hot. 
And the big fella really got him started. Michigan challenged him to play one on one in the first half, and he certainly did well. And it was apparent that Matt Parent's game plan earlier was we are going to pound the basketball inside to Isaac Haas, and they did just that. And the big fella, like you said, single coverage for both of the first half, and he was able to really go to work. Here taking his time on John Teske, a big physical move. Then getting to his right jump hook, a staple of Haas's repertoire. Now, it is important to mention, Michigan did send a double team late in the half. Love to see how that plays out. Have to love the bounce back, though, that the Wolverines showed. Able to really show some resiliency. They got down as much as nine in the first half. Showed some fight, came back out of a timeout, and quickly cut it back. Only find themselves, themselves down five. Coming back into the second half, really, if you're John Beeline, I think you like where you're at. You know you can play better than you did in the first half. It was really interesting, too, that Purdue showed its versatility in the number of ways they can beat you. Carson Edwards was scoreless for the first 14 minutes of the first half, but he scored 11 after that. Dakota Mathias is a three. Michigan's leading scorer, Charles Matthews, number one, doesn't have a field goal. Mo Wagner, their second leading scorer, only had a couple of field goals in the first half. I like that possession there. You're Mo Wagner, you're going to drive Isaac Haas, not necessarily looking to score, but converting that defense into the paint. Find your teammates. Get him a good look. And it wouldn't hurt to pick up another foul. Haas has two that he picked up in the first half, and Michigan would appreciate getting the third. Definitely go right at him if you're Mo Wagner. Xavier Simpson trying to feed Fogner. Knocked out of bounds. Four on the shot clock. And right there, he's got to give a target. You're not, you know, Carson Edwards is little. He, you can't throw a bounce pass there. Have him give you a target high and throw him up, throw the ball to him. Wagner. Back iron. And Matthews has his first field goal of the night. We'll see if that can maybe get him going. But he goes up and gets that rebound. Isaac Haas out guarding Mo Wagner on the perimeter. No shot blockers in the paint. And a good start for Michigan. Now, the way Purdue executed in the first half, shot better than 61%. You expect to see any defensive changes from the Wolverines. It will be interesting to see how they defend the post, and I think they'll go from there. But we, have, we haven't seen this man yet. We'll see if he can get going. Dakota Mathias. Mathias with his second three-pointer of the night in Purdue. Up by six. Mohamed Ami Abdul Rahman with a terrific take against Vince Evans. What finish. Gets to his left hand, his offhand. Holds it out there. Keeps it away from the defense. That's what you need from your senior leader. This crowd gets loud. You move the basketball. Get to the rim and finish. Haas. Had great position. Instead, option for the assist. DJ Thompson has another three for Purdue. And Purdue has been poor at all season from three. They've hit their first two. Now, in better than eight and a half games, Robbie, that's 221 three-point attempts. They're shooting better than 50%. I mean, they are a tough scout. It's ridiculous. They are a coach's nightmare. When you're going through that scouting report, you're looking at who are you doubling off of? P.J. Thompson's shooting 51% from three, and he's shooting a lot of times horse shots. Wagner spins right past Thompson, but can't finish it, and then Haas comes over to try to stop him, so you couldn't score over the little guy, but you did over the 7-2, dude. Well, he made it a little more difficult on himself there, but I love the move. Quick spin move. P.J. Thompson not ready for it. Wagner being aggressive here in the second half. Gotta like that if you're a fan of the Wolverines. Deep position again for Haas. Can't get it to go. Wagner does a good job keeping him from getting a second chance. To try to push Haas out, but then also, once he gets the basketball, make him score over the top of you. Wagner. And Michigan is in a, in a nice little rhythm right here. And they are operating on the offensive end with a high efficiency. Matt Painter cannot like what he has seen thus far from their defense. Giving up an offensive rebound and now giving up some open shots, especially to Mo Wagner. Michigan has hit four of his first six here in the second half. Wagner into double big. Great look from Haas. And Vincent Edwards with the flush. Vincent Edwards is such an underrated cutter. Right there. You see a little buddy action, big to big. Abdul Rockbond. 
Michigan has, for whatever reason, played Purdue very well over the last few years. Beat them in the Big Ten tournament last year. Had a one-point game of victory for the Boilermakers last time. Fodger with the steal. Tries to throw it off of Haas. Purdue gets it back. Carson Edwards is tied up. He's in a sea of blue and maize. Matthews ahead of the field. And Michigan has taken the lead. And what a look-ahead pass there by Xavier Simpson. Finds Charles Matthews. He gets off the ground so fast. Michigan last led at 20 to 19. Now inside 16 minutes to play here in West Lafayette. Beeline's team fighting back. Here's Isaac Haas. Hasn't scored since the first 12 minutes of the first half, and now he has. And Purdue's back on top. I don't know what you do with him one on one. I mean, he's just a giant. I mean, he's got and and Mo Wagner's a big guy too, but he looks small next to him. Wagner, 6'11". Xavier Simpson, a punk trotters me. A little skyhook action right there. Kareem would be proud. <laughs> Easy, big fella. <laughs> calm down, Rob. Calm down. <laughs> you know, a good-looking hook off the drive from a young guy who you see his confidence growing seemingly by the game. Really becoming a complete player. You look at the stat sheets, he, he throws it up. He gets rebounds, he gets assists. Great play. And it's two terrific passes and great cut from Haas to Vince Edwards. And right now they certainly have a nice chemistry. Haas able to find Vincent Edwards, who does such a good job of finding open areas. We're seeing some offense. If you like offense, this is your place. Michigan's at seven of nine. Make it eight of ten. Purdue's hit five and six. That was deep. I mean, Muhammad Ali, Abdul Rahman, he was a good two or three feet out past that arc. And if Purdue's going to switch with Isaac Haas guarding, they're going to give that up. That's just a, a, a big time shot. Abdul Rahman cuts off Carson Edwards, but Edwards steps back behind the three. Charles Matthews cleans it away from Michigan. Drew Rockman was eight of his 15 in this half. Working on P.J. Thompson, getting in the paint. Haas spots it away. Matthias, clean look. A little miscommunication there by the Michigan defense, and you have to locate the goal Matthias. He steps into a three, just kind of leaps in as the trailer. You cannot let him get a look like that because he is going to bury it on you. 16 lead changes. How much fun is this in one of the great arenas in college basketball? Matthews to the bucket and scores. Make it 17. Well, he just explodes off the ground so, so impressively. I mean, that's a blow by drive. Haas coming over. He gets off the floor so quickly. Purdue's won 15 in a row, the nation's longest winning streak. Michigan's won 10 out of 12. Simpson got a little too close, a little too much contact with Matthias. Xavier's going to pick up his second foul, a one-point game, just over 13 minutes to play. Dakota Matthias, see it and be it. Got a good one. And Wildcats out of the pool, West Virginia. Still in the top ten, despite a stumble this week, college game day will be there. But nothing that happens in that challenge, I don't think, can really eclipse what we're seeing in terms of shooting in the oh, second half from Michigan and Purdue. Unbelievable. You look at the stat sheet for both teams. I mean, six of eight, seven of nine, four of seven, four of eight, three of five. And it's, it just goes on and on and on for both of these squads. It's really a fun game to watch this far. Had seven lead changes in seven minutes here in the second half. Might as well make it eight and eight as Benson Edwards scores and Purdue goes back on top by a single. And that really is his bread and butter right there. He catches it deep and gets to that right jump hook over his left shoulder. So effective. Have to make him go the other way. Matthew swings it into the corner, shooting and scoring is Isaiah Liver. And just beautiful basketball. That is textbook pick and roll execution right there at its finest by John Beeline's team. You're going to suck that help side in, make the extra pass, play basketball the right way. It's an easy game, Reese. <laughs> Liver is Mr. Basketball from Kalamazoo. He was the first Mr. Basketball from the state of Michigan to become a Wolverine in a decade. 
Uh, Matt Harms into the game wearing number 34 now. His number 32 got ripped in the first half. So that's the big fellow from Amsterdam who winds up on the deck. Seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. Here's the 12 minute mark. And Michigan with a 60 to 58 lead. A four inch shooting second half of both teams. Got a great finish coming from West Lafayette. As long as there is fear. As long Just behind Purdue, St. Mary's. They won 14 in a row. They play BYU tonight as we take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. How about Jock Landale, big Australian who's having a sensational year for the Gales. One of three players averaging 20 and 10, along with Marvin Bagley from Duke and Bonzi Colson, who's injured at Notre Dame. Landale's been sensational because he can tag this week, aren't you? Yeah. Long struck out to Spokane, Washington. Ryan Klein beats the shot clock, and it's another three for the Boilers. And another lead change in our game. Man, how much fun is it to watch offenses execute at this level? I mean, both of them Teske. really operating. And right there, that is textbook again on the pick and roll. Teske doing a great job of laying wood on the screen and then rolling right to that rim. Terrific look from Xavier Simpson. I mentioned it earlier that Michigan has played well against Purdue. Why are the Wolverines? Look, well, Purdue's won their last three Big Ten games by 23 points or more. Why? Why a tough matchup here to see Harms getting it in deep against Teske? Score. Well, first of all, Mo Wagner is a tough matchup for their side, especially Isaac Haas. And that's been the case really with A.J. Hammonds and also a little bit with Biggie Swanigan last year. So they, they've been able to play off that. And they've had really good players. You look at who they've had. Derek Walton Jr., a great player. Zach Irvin, very good. And this year they have guards that, that have really played well in the Purdue games. Abdul Rockman has had a sensational second half. Reigns in another three. He has double figures in this half. 13 lead changes. And Abdul Rockman now up to 18 points. Four of six from behind the arc. Great slip there by Mahomes. You said it, Reese. Abdul Rockman playing like a senior. And both teams continue to have punch and counter punch as we come down the stretch here. And Mackey Arena. Abdul Rahman feeling it. But that one a little long. Another chance for the Michigan Wolverines. Teske rolling again. Matthew's trying to create a little space and see if he can take Klein. A lot of dribbling from Matthews. Abdul Rockman. Buckets. <laughs> this dude is in the zone. Right now, Amali Abdul Rockman enjoying his last trip to Mackey Arena. He's getting his game on. 14 of his 21 here in the second half. Robbie wearing those pink shoes that he started wearing last season in the Big Ten tournament. Pulled him out from the closet at his house when he struggled earlier in the season. We may never take him off after that. And no matter what shoes Vince Edwards is wearing, he keeps knocking them in and we're tied again. Edwards has only missed two shots tonight. He's got 19. What a game. This is an offensive clinic on both ends of the floor. And Matthias, I believe, is going to be called for the foul. And the offenses are rolling right now. And Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman, he is shooting the ball with some confidence. Back on the other end, right back at you. Vince Edwards just sizes up Charles Matthews. He lets that thing fly. Both teams are shooting 75% in the second half. Vince Edwards has 19. Tied at 68, 8.42 to go in front of a 
Great crowd, better than 14,000 here at Mackey Arena, Purdue with the steal. Here comes Edwards. Wagner, did he tie him up or did he call him on the foul? No, they're going to get, they're pointing at Duncan Robinson. Well, a missed opportunity for Michigan because that lob was there and Abdul Rockmeyer came off the screen. Unfortunately, I think he was expecting a lob pass and it was really thrown like a chest pass. Vince Edwards doing a good job of bringing some offense out of it. They called Duncan Robinson. Yeah, he, didn't do anything. he didn't do anything. I thought uh, Wagner had it tied up clean, but Robinson's going to be called for his first foul. Edwards will take it, and he's got 20 points tonight. Vince Edwards is playing at a first-team all-conference level. You, you look at what he's been able to do. Averaging 21 over his last three. Really operating incredibly efficiently. Matt Painter challenged him to play the entire season the way typically the last couple of years he played in the postseason tournaments and in March. He's done that. He has been sensational here on this January night. And there's going to be an illegal screen call. Ron Simmons called for that one. That's his first. Michigan trying to get to their dribble dribble handoff action here and yep Jerron Simmons just kind of rolls through it picks off Carson Edwards That's a good call by this officiating crew It was just handed to stat Robbie 24 field goals and two turnovers in this half. Is that any good? Is that a good ratio? <laughs> I think that's pretty good <laughs> Haas, Wagner got the block Vince it in. Those are tough, Breeze, because you play, you have a great defensive possession. You do a good job of switching the guard-to-guard guard screens, then you block a shot, and you give up an offensive rebound. Deflating play. Abdul Rachman took it all the way, and the whistle late. And the foul is going to be called on Vince Edwards. Purdue with a four-point lead in that Center, a unique take on Tigers performance at Torrey Pines. Andy North will join SVP, talk about whether Tigers can still shine. All-star rosters, LeBron and Steph, apparently, according to an alert I got, broke Twitter that somehow Twitter keeps coming back. And also senior bowl with Todd McShay. It's always on the ESPN app. It's about the only thing that hasn't gone at Dua Rockman's way in the second half. He's been sensational. He missed that free throw. Bobby, earlier tonight on Sports Center. Michael and Jamel. They asked me if I thought Purdue was the best team in the country. I said, not yet. But this is the fourth straight game. I'm going to rock my misses in both. Fourth straight game in which they've made at least 10 threes. They got two giants in the middle, and Haas is an offensive force. If they shoot like this, they're, they're going to win it all. Jay Williams said it on game day last week. They're going to win the whole thing if they shoot like How do you call it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows right now. John Beeline's fighting that fight. As we speak, because if, if they're not shooting well, you still can go to Isaac Haas and you still can go to Vince Edwards on the block. And defensively, they're going to keep themselves in games. Tonight is an, an incredible game. Both teams offensively have been great. This is really an aberration almost from a statistical standpoint for their defensive effort. But their defense will keep them in games most of the time, and, and they can just score the balls. If they are shooting the basketball well, I don't know how you go. No answer for Haas that time. 17 for the big fella. He has gotten so much better. I mean, it, it really is impressive to see over the course of four years the way that he can post up, make simple moves, make strong decisions, and really dominate games in the Big Ten Conference. Purdue on a 9 nothing run. Robinson. The three ball shooter going to the rack. It's not his deal, but right there. Puts his head down, finishes over the seven-footer. Love it. There's only one explanation. All ten guys on the floor just having out-of-body experiences <laughs> offensively tonight. Now. It's unbelievable. I'm Let's all see. for it. Big fella. And one. That is a grown man post-up right there. I mean, Mo Wagner, by no means he's small, but Isaac Haas just sealed him under the rim. You see it, a little dribble handoff action. Vince Edwards, the nice 
post entry, and there is nothing Mo Wagner can do right there. He he was he was done. Wagner Haas finishes the three-point play. Isaac Haas now with 20. Wagner's 6'11", 245, and he's given up three inches and 45 pounds at least when he's guarding Haas in the post. Simpson. Blocked by Haas. Simpson spilling on the floor. Beeline wanted the call. Carson Edwards. That's a really good defensive effort right there. Stepping in Jordan Poole with the quick hands. To more of the Purdue offensive push. You said it, Reese. John Beeline not happy. And we see Xavier Simpson get to the rim. And it's tough to tell from that angle how much contact there actually was. But Haas stays in the play. Blocks the shot. Queen's to Isaac helped him up. He's over a foot taller. What a guy. He's Xavier by Andre. Air ball from Carson Edwards. Dakota Mathias. After Rockman comes flying in for the rebound, and he'll pick up the foul. Haas got him across the arm. That's three on Isaac. Matt Harms racing to the scorer's table to check in for Haas. Big possession here for Michigan. Unable the last few trips to really get anything going. I think you, you look at it. Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman has been your guy this half. I, I might think about maybe putting him into pick and roll with Mo Wagner, but have Wagner slip out. Because Purdue is switching on contact right now. You have him slip out. Rahman can read it. Throw it to Wagner. Or take your man to the rim. Sends a finish late turnover. Carson Edwards. Abdul Rahman racing back, altered the shot, but we're going to get him for the foul. What a great read right there by Carson Edwards because he, he comes from the other side of the floor on this play. So intelligent. You see him right there. He's guarding Rahman. He reads the play perfectly. Wagner going to be wide open. Yeah, high level defensive effort right there from Carson Edwards. Edwards makes the first. He now has a dozen. And if he makes this one, the Boilermakers will match their biggest lead of the night at nine. He does, and they do. Danger time for the Wolverines. Now down nine. Mackey getting loud. Wagner. High into the air. Edwards can't get an offensive rebound from Rivers. Fresh shot clock for the Wolverines. Beeline's going to call a timeout. John sensing that his team needs a basket. Very few veterans drawing up ball plays in the Michigan coach. Purdue up by nine. How do you win it, business? Field goal in his last seven trips. That's a little bit more than four minutes. Beeline just called his timeout, Robbie. What do you think he's going to do here? You know, he loves to use Bo Wagner as a screener as a decoy almost when they pin in his defender. We to see if they do just that here. Wagner's at the elbow. He just set a screen. Popped out. Wagner. Much needed for the Wolverines. Both Wagner now with 13. Such an impressive play call there by John Beeline. Just using Mo Wagner, knowing Purdue is switching right there, and he almost screened his own man in there. Gets himself free, confuses that Purdue defense. Matthias might have been better served to kick that one back out. Swatted out of bounds. Isaac Haas will return. Haas with 20 points tonight. Is sitting with three fouls. Haas has had a huge game tonight and hit the decisive free throw in the first meeting of the season in Ann Arbor. Carson Edwards. Delivers with the rebound in Michigan, who was reeling on the ropes a few moments ago, a chance to draw closer. 
Simpson. A little too hard. He felt Haas coming. Shot a little too hard off the board. Wagner stands in and draws the charge. He said it's saving Simpson. He had a layup. I think he did feel Haas coming, but he was way, way farther behind. Don't think they're going to get it. You see Bo Wagner making a play for his team, sacrificing the body. And Vince Edwards, who's a perfect three for three tonight, was ready for a step in three if Carson had given it up. And that's the type of play that Edwards, Carson Edwards, I mean, this year has made consistently yes. and this time held on to the ball. And that's been his, his maturity as a player. And you're right, that time not making the correct read. But for the most part this season, he's made that play. He has been terrific all season and very good tonight. Wagner by Harms. He's got to be aggressive because he's calling for that basketball, which I love to see. Got a freshman on him. you got to take advantage of that. Matt Harms has not been through the wars. Mo Wagner has. Right there, just whips him right off the dribble. Gets to his right hand. And again, another answer from this Wolverine team. Matt Painter calls a timeout. Michigan was facing its biggest deficit of the night. Mo Wagner with five straight points. Hot tongue, baby. In D1, averaging 15 points, five assists per game on 50% shooting. That game versus UCF and ESPN two minutes away. Reese. And then Tom, thank you very much. Even the costumes fired up here in Mackey. Big 12 SEC Challenge comes up Saturday, Oklahoma and Bama early, Texas A&M and Kansas at 4.30 from Allen Fieldhouse, and then the nightcap, Kentucky and West Virginia College game day will be there. That game tipped off a little bit earlier this week, 7 o'clock Eastern time from Morgantown. It'll be raucous there. Certainly is here tonight as Purdue tries to extend the nation's longest winning streak to 16 straight and getting a fight for Michigan. Here's big Isaac Haas. And Haas has had a terrific night. Barely drew iron. Wolverines rivers to the bucket. They can't finish. That's tough. Mo Wagner pulled the chair out from Isaac Haas there. They got, were able to get out in transition. Livers got a great look. Unfortunately, just a little too strong. Unable to finish at the rim. Wagner comes out and he tried to get the steal instead. Mo will be called for the foul on reach. Third on Mo and will be shooting the one and one. Dakota Mathias, better than 80% from the free throw line. Well, both these teams shooting better than 57% from the high guard tonight. <laughs> better than 60 percent from the floor sometimes you hear people talk about baseball how i love a good pitcher's duel they wouldn't like this game tonight. <laughs> they, they would not be about this Thias is the front end of the one and one ball goes out of bounds last touch by the boilermakers so a break for the wolverines as a normally excellent free throw shooter dakota matthias had to rattle out Lazy pass from Matthews trying to get it to Wagner in a turnover and steal for Purdue. They love to run that set and get Wagner posted up on the block. A little misdirection action. And really just a, a really, really, really bad pass. That's that's not, not acceptable at this stage of the game. Double team on Carson Edwards. Matthias dumps it into Harms. I'd had an opportunity if he was thinking shot there. Matthias gonna have to shoot up a contested three. Excellent defense by Michigan on that end. Michigan's defense locked in. I would look for them to go a little ball screen action. Let's see if Mo Vonner can slip out, get himself free. Wagner didn't get a piece of Vince Edwards after a rock mine driving on Vince Edwards. And Edwards very frustrated by the foul call. Felt as if he didn't reach and Abdur Rachman created most of the contact and at least based on the live view I tend to agree with him. There's a little hand action. Now that Abdur Rachman he's, he's hooking and he's falling down. I mean that is not a foul. Now they're saying it's on the ground. 
That's only five team fouls on Purdue, so we're not shooting. Michigan is in the one and one. And Wagner tried to dribble through too many people, and Purdue closed it up and forces another turnover. And really not good spacing right there for Michigan. Nowhere for Mo Wagner to drive. Purdue's going to talk this over here, drop a play in the huddle. The Boilermakers with a four-point lead, just over two minutes to play. They forced turnovers on Michigan's last two possessions, and we're coming right down to the wire this time, just as we did in the first meeting between these two in Ann Arbor. And they played earlier. They had the game tied at 69 late. There was an overturned call. Originally, the ball was given to Michigan. Instead, Purdue was granted possession, and Wagner was called for fouling Isaac Haas. Haas, good free throw shooter for Big Man. He knocked down the first of the one and one. Second one rattled out. So Michigan had a shot, but Matthews, Charles Matthews, had a desperation heave. Beeline referred to that drive as a circuitous route to the basket, and Purdue held on to the 70 to 69 win. Their closest call in this 15-game winning streak. Haas got them off to a tremendous start, and it's been big in the latter stages as well. As we head toward the two-minute mark, four-point lead for the number three team in the country. Wagner in a play very similar to what he was talking the foul on, couldn't get the ball, and Haas. Dumps it home. And what a luxury at the end of the game to be able to rely on a guy that can get you a bucket. And a great post up there by Haas seals off his defender and throws it down with some authority. Abdul Rahman is at a tremendous second half. Gets Michigan back within four. It's a poised drive right there. He's been that guy all night for Michigan. But the steady players, the steady presence for this Michigan Wolverine team. But let's take a look. Wagner. A little bit of a gamble there. And when you're 7 2, you can abuse that rep. Worth the gamble, though, there, because he hasn't shown a lot of ability to stop him. Right. I mean, I, yeah. Or I don't disagree. With him. I, I think you can, at this point, you haven't done it all night. Maybe mix it up, send him a different look. Been much better this year at taking care of the basketball, but in, in previous seasons, he's been a guy that you trap him, he can turn it over. Seen a couple of good passes and a couple of assists from him. This is a guy who only had six shots in his last two games because of the way teams were guarding. Michigan shows some pressure in the backcourt, ate up a little time up the shot clock. Look for the ducking. There it is. Buried him. He's physically overpowered him. Wagner, that's four. You hear about Wagner, it's almost like a, what can I do? I mean, I, I am, he is just too big for him to guard, and look at where he's at. He's got him inside the charge circle. Wagner has to follow him. You are at his will. Wagner's tried a little bit of everything against Haas tonight. Makes the first one. This is an area of major improvement for him. A guy that really worked on his free throws. We saw him today after shoot around. Spending some time with assistant coach Greg Gary, getting some extra reps in. Now you can leave him on the floor because he can convert. In the game, we're going to see Matt Harms come in offense for defense. Harms a really good shot blocker. Haven't seen a lot of that tonight. The shot blocking rate among the top ten in the country, but it has been Haas's night on offense. With Michigan just down two possessions and a capable three-point shooting team. Can't get it to go, and Matthias able to keep Matthews off the board. A good block out, and now inside a minute to go. He got a good shot. Wagner slipped out. It's a little short. Carson Edwards has it poked away. A steal by the Wolverines. Two on one. Matthews takes it himself. He might have had Wagner for the dunk. He did have Wagner for the dunk. Not sure why he didn't throw it up to him. Charles Matthews saying he had my arm. The officials beg to differ. Beeline not pleased with it. We take a look at the replay. A lot of ball. Might have been a little bit little of bit contact. Of a lot of ball. Bang, bang play. But still, 
You gotta give it up to your center footer. He's running the floor. Gotta reward the big man for running there. In addition to that, had Matthews been fouled, he hasn't been a good free throw shooter either. I mean, I know that type of thing's not running through your head as you're racing down the floor right. trying to make a play. But it looked like an opportunity for an easy two. And flashbacks as the officials went over to confer to make sure that the ball was indeed off of Purdue and belonged to Michigan. We mentioned earlier that's what ended up giving the Boilermakers a chance to win in the first meeting. See if we roll up with the same guy too, it was Matthews, and Matthews takes the shot from the baseline. Four-point game now and a quick timeout for the Reeves. That's just a complete defensive breakdown. They lose track of Charles Matthews there. He leaks out. Now Beeline so effective at drawing out, drawing up, under out of bounds plays. Somehow, Purdue just loses track of Charles Matthews. Such a nice screen there for Wagner. Purdue gets caught up in a switch. Go, both go with Wagner, and Matthews is wide open. Everybody thinking 13 instead it was one, the transfer from Kentucky. And it's amazing. As a shooter, you want to get a shot, set a good screen. Because that's what happens. I mean, you set a good back screen, you set a good down screen. You're putting pressure on the defense to make a decision. And obviously, the line is going to look to extend this game early in the possession. going to look to foul. As you look out on the lineup that Purdue puts on the floor, not a whole lot of great options out there to no, put on the no, free throw line. Up. DJ Thompson 87, Carson Edwards 80, Dakota Mathias 81, Vince Edwards 83, and Isaac Haas 76. You don't have many options. Thompson gets away from a couple, and Williams has to be careful there as he's reaching out to get the foul. Grabbing to get the attention of just the one and one. And Wagner with the four foul. He'll go offense to defense as Teske goes back to the bench. Have to think Michigan gonna try and hope for a, a missed free throw here playing transition. I would think you'd see them drag Wagner in for a screen roll if they can play out of a flow tie situation and have him slip right out. He's been able to get good looks. And, and really you have to think Purdue knows that he's slipping at this point. They've switched all game. DJ e. Thompson, an 88% free throw shooter, hits the front end. This is also the last time we'll have the one and one. It'll be the double bonus on the next. Wolverine foul. Six point lead. Wolverines have to get it up quickly after Rockman continues his torrid second half. He has 26. Tough shot, but Carson Edwards cannot gamble like that. You take yourself just a little bit out of the play. Rockman's been so good tonight shooting the basketball for deep. You give him an inch, tonight is his night from the three-point line. He's had six triples tonight. Career high evening for Muhammad Ali Abdul Rockman. There's the gamble. He just takes himself just a little bit out of the play. If you want to beat good teams, you just got to be solid at the end of the game. Make Michigan score over the top of you. Played a really, really smart game tonight, but that not a smart play. It's Edwards now with 24, and it's a two-possession game. Duncan Robinson on the floor, an excellent three-point shooter for the Wolverines. No gel Eastern gonna come in for Matt Harm, so Purdue definitely switching one through five now. No seven-footer on the floor right now for the Boilermakers. That's been a rare occurrence tonight. Still don't need a three if you're Michigan. If you get burned to the rim, plenty of time in this game. Samson does, and it is blocked from behind by Carson Edwards. On a night dominated by offense, that was a fine defensive play from Carson. Xavier Simpson as fast as any guard in the Big Ten that we have. Carson Edwards just never quits on the play. Keeps himself in it and makes a really nice defensive effort. Defense! 
Simpson drives it again and he'll go to the free throw line an opportunity to draw closer without time coming off the clock and I thought he might have had Duncan Robinson coming off he, he was coming and the defender certainly trailing it's hard sometimes in the heat of the game but no he did have Duncan yeah, he did Robinson. Ryan Klein screened I remember how mightily Simpson has struggled from the free throw line Now mentally that's gonna play into this. It's gonna, it's gonna take a really mentally tough kid to regroup after a miss like that. Gotta get one though. Just over 51% for the season. Isn't it amazing how mental free throws can be? Missed them both. The crowd here at Mackey starting to sense they're closing in on their 16th straight win, which would match a school record. The Wolverines are 0 for 4 from the free throw line here in the second half. And just a flating miss. As you leave points at the line, especially at the end of the game. And it's tough to overcome that. There are a couple of final four banners in this great old barn a national championship banner from the free tournament days there are lofty dreams for this team that has so many weapons offensively gritty and tough on defense I think it's fair to say that you're seeing Purdue start to establish itself in a team that you could say they can get to the final four in San Antonio but if you're Michigan I know there's no moral victory but you're gonna look at this and say hey guys we could play anybody in the country. Because Purdue, they withstood a serious punch tonight. Simpson drives and scores virtually uncontested to get it back to a two-possession game. Michigan's got to foul quickly and hope that Purdue cooperates by missing some free throws. And the Boilermakers, that sharp shooting from the perimeter, and they've hit clutch free throws down the stretch here. And ice it away from the free throw line as Matthews just picked up his third. On a night Vincent Edwards has had 27 points, has not missed from the free throw line. Make it 28. And just for good measures, not like Vincent just been scoring. He's got five rebounds and five assists, too. He is so versatile. I mean, I mean, he's a good offensive rebounder. We saw him really cut well off the basketball tonight. He can guard. Really, a really good college basketball player. 29 for Edwards, and this Purdue offensive juggernaut has put almost 30 points more than Michigan allows per game this season on this Wolverine defense. And they're going to foul Edwards again. It's going to give him an opportunity to get to 30 if he happens to be counting. I had those stats, Vince. <laughs> Game should be well in hand. To help out that average. Senior from Middletown, Ohio. Came in averaging a shade under 15 per game. If he makes this one, he'll duck. But that's his first free throw miss of the night. He hit his first eight. I think he knows he's got 29. Got to him, yeah. Does he know he's got 29? He has to. As a, as a scorer, at the end of the game, you definitely hunt the basketball to go put yourself in the situation. You know you've got 20. 30. Now you got 30. Time winding down. Simpson will put in a little window dressing, and Michigan gave him a run, but the number three team in the country is going to make it 16 in a row. Vince Edwards finishes it off with his first career 30-point game. And the Boilermakers continue to be hot. Best start ever in Big Ten play for a team that has four Big Ten regular season championships in anyone. 92-88 the final. NFL Pro Bowl skills showdown coming up next. For Robbie Hummel.